Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Hi, good morning. It's Monday, May 3rd. What? <laughs> You're already kicking. You're making me laugh already. I, I didn't do anything. <laughs> yes, I you did. Good morning, everybody. It yes. is Monday. It is May 3rd. You said that part, didn't you? Yes, yes. I imagine you're halfway through, or about halfway through your flight from Salt Lake City to Hawaii for vacation, and you hear, bing. Um, ladies and gentlemen, is there a doctor on board? Yes. Because that happens, right? We hear those stories right. all the time. But actually, a, a baby being born uh, in mid-flight. Oh, yeah, unbelievable yeah. story. So this is trending. Uh, the, the TikTok video of this mid-air birth has gone viral, is getting a ton of views. So baby Raymond Munga was born on an airplane, uh, and mom didn't even know she was pregnant. Yeah, uh, she, this is, what was her quote? Quote, I just didn't know I was pregnant. This guy just came out of nowhere. Luckily though, they had the help of a doctor and three NICU nurses. Yeah, who would have thought that on this flight, um, it would have not only had a doctor, but three nurses that specialize in dealing with premature babies. Uh, the new mom, Lavinia Munga of Orem, Utah, said, I'm just happy he's here and he's doing well. Uh, she was traveling with her family to Hawaii about halfway through. She had that medical emergency and she unexpectedly went into labor and you said she said she had no idea and the guy came out of nowhere. Yeah, uh, it says on the, the article that for three hours until the plane landed, the team did the best they could with the limited equipment mm -hmm. that they had on board and they worked together to keep that baby stable. So here's what they did. None of the equipment was on board, obviously suitable for a preemie. Uh, the born, baby was born 29 weeks instead of the normal 40. So the nurses said we made baby warmers out of bottles that were microwaved and we used an Apple watch to measure the baby heart rate till we were able to safely land and get the baby and mom off to Kapiolani Medical Center mm -hmm. to the cheers and applause of everybody on that Delta Airlines flight. Yeah, glad uh, baby and mom are doing well. Mom said, of course, she was overwhelmed and grateful. Um, you know, and then, you know, it's pretty common, uh, according to a quote by a doctor here, that uh, that some women just don't know that they're pregnant and, and this mom was one of them. A couple of days later, the doctor and the nurses actually had a chance to meet baby Raymond and uh, the uh, NICU there at Capulani Medical Center in Hawaii say they're gonna hang on to Raymond until he is uh, healthy and ready uh, to go home. Talk about teamwork, right? No kidding. <laughs> Let's look at today's nine at nine. A funeral will be held today in North Carolina for Andrew Brown Jr. He was killed by deputies serving a warrant in Elizabeth City last month. The Reverend Al Sharpton will deliver the eulogy. At least three people were killed and more than 20 others hospitalized after a boat broke apart in rough waters off the San Diego coast. The U.S. Border Patrol says it appears the boat was being used to smuggle people into the U.S. Parts of the Southern Plains, Ohio Valley, Central Appalachians, and the Mississippi Valley are under the threat of severe thunderstorms and flash flooding today and tomorrow. This is the storm that soaked Texas over the weekend, moves slowly northeast. U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken is in London today ahead of bilateral meetings with the foreign ministries of Republic of Korea and Japan. One of the topics expected to be discussed is China. A fourth flight with aid from the U.S. has arrived in India. That happened yesterday. The shipment includes 125,000 vials of the antiviral drug remdesivir, which is used to treat COVID-19. The CDC says almost 8% of the millions of people who got the first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine didn't come back for a second shot. Researchers say the second dose is essential for proper protection against the virus. The FDA says it will grant emergency authorization to administer the Pfizer vaccine to children between the ages of 12 to 15. A decision could come as early as this week. Cruise ships are returning to Galveston as the industry prepares for a possible midsummer return. The CDC told cruise lines that if more than 95% of their passengers and crew are vaccinated, the ships can sail again in July. A legal showdown between Apple and Fortnite publisher Epic Games begins today in federal court in Oakland, California. Epic Games is suing Apple over the cut it takes on everything sold through the App Store, calling the store a virtual monopoly. That's today's 9 at 9.
things are going to warm up today, but I stepped outside for my second dose of coffee and uh, it was pretty nice for right now. Let's go outside with live cam. Take a peek out there. A bunch of folks just now tuning in, waking up on the early Monday morning. We know the ground is really still saturated from all the rainfall, Justin. That led to some fog and haze this morning. And I got two words for you. Heat and index. We may be dealing with that this afternoon. Fair of bad news, I know, but at least we did get some rain over the weekend. It was beautiful rain. We got some big time totals. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later, but that humidity is there and with the temperatures warming up today, I do think we're going to see a heat index. It's going to feel like it's in the mid 90s in some cases. 74 right now, still kind of hazy out there with some cloud cover. Southeasterly winds at about eight. Dew point is at 70 and we'll make it all the way up to 94 today. You'll notice there are some small rain chances in the forecast. Isolated storm can't be ruled out, but it's not likely. Most of us will be unaffected. Here's the pollen count for today. Molds 7,870. That's a huge number, but it's down from where it was yesterday. That number should continue to tumble. Pecan and grass both low. And I should mention that today is an ozone action day. There will be some unhealthy air in the sense that uh, there will be some ozone. Just a heads up there. Forecast. 83 noontime, 91, 3 o'clock, 94, 5 o'clock. We do have a 10% chance of a storm firing along the dry line this afternoon. We'll talk about that forecast. A frontal battery tomorrow, too, means some cooler temperatures. That's coming up here in just a few minutes. Guys. Thank you, Justin. If you are headed over towards the Cory area right now, we've got this traffic slow down. Fire and perhaps EMS on the scene. This is down on the frontage road at the intersection of Jones Maltzberger. 281 frontage looks to be southbound based on that camera shot right there, but uh, you can see fire truck is blocking a couple of lanes there and there's some cones and other vehicles to the right. We'll keep an eye on this for you. And top stories we're following today. The search continues for a man who may be armed and ran from a crash on the northwest side. According to the Bear County Sheriff's Office, that man being chased by deputies from Kendall County when he crashed outside a Twin Peaks restaurant at I-10 and De Zavala. They had spotted the car in the area before 5 this morning. It's believed to be connected to a separate criminal investigation here in Bear County. After the crash, the driver ran off. San Antonio police have been helping in the search for him and said he may be carrying a weapon. We are still waiting to learn the name of the man shot and killed at a Leon Valley apartment complex. Police, they're still looking for the person who pulled the trigger. Officers found the man around 730 yesterday morning at the Vista Del Rey apartments on Evers Road. He was taken to a hospital where he later died. Right now, investigators are still working to figure out why that man was shot. We've been tracking this story all morning long. An Amber Alert to tell you about today. The Austin Police Department is looking for a missing four-year-old Wyatt Crowley. Austin Police tell us Wyatt was last seen in Burton yesterday morning. Officers are also looking for 36-year-old Joshua Crowley, who they believe is connected with Wyatt's disappearance. Police say the uh, gentleman is driving a black 2011 Mazda MZ3. Texas license plate 737763C. If you have any information, call Austin Police 512 Nine seven four two thousand. If you missed our coverage of the city election over the weekend, we have everything you need to know right now on KSET.com. The biggest takeaways, Proposition B, B failed to pass. Mayor Ron Nuremberg was elected for a third term, and five city council races are headed to runoffs. We, you can read more about election results and what comes next on KSAT.com backslash vote 2021. In your morning headlines, a big punch thrown at an AAU basketball tournament over the weekend. And we'll hear from a hero who helped rescue some of those folks. A boat was being smashed against the California shoreline over the weekend. And also, we're talking about saving some animals. David Sears is here. David, how was your weekend? It was a great weekend. Good. We had a different angle of that boat being smashed up against the shore yeah. there in Southern California. Absolutely incredible video. We'll get to that in just a second. But speaking of incredible, we're going to start with kids playing some hoop. One kid shoves another kid. They square off and then watch this. Comes back at him and nails him with a punch. The kid staggers and goes down. The amazing thing, nothing was done. No foul, no technical, no ejection, nothing. This all happening in the Bay Area of California. The kids are playing AAU basketball. The kid who got punched is Evan. His mom claims that members of the team in the dark jerseys were using a lot of racial slurs at the mostly Asian team in the light jerseys. That's happening in Long Beach, and it happened long before the punch. Now, these two players were going after a loose ball. The third kid steps in, shoves the player, and the punch was thrown. Mom says not a single adult stepped in to help out. She had to go out and get the, court, get the kid off the court herself. The worst part is no one apologized. How is a foul, a technical foul, not called when he's obviously 
you know, punching them in the face. We pay a lot of money. A lot of families pay a lot of money for this AAU. It just makes, you know, parents not want to pay all this money to put their kids in danger if they're not going to be protected and be safe. Yeah, according to mom, Evan suffered a concussion. The guy in charge of the tournament refused to even watch the video. All right, let's show you some more amazing video from that boat wreck over the weekend off the coast of Southern California. You see the waves are just completely destroying this vessel. People jumping off the vessel. You can see this guy hanging on right there as the boat just breaks apart. Now, the video taken by a person who just happened to be on the beach near San Diego when this tragedy happened. Unfortunately, three people died, 27 were injured. But if not for a couple of heroes, it could have been worse. Cal Foy, a Navy rescue swimmer and another service member with SEAL training, saw the boat tip over. They evaluated the situation, knew they were putting themselves in danger, but also knew that they had to do something. Before we jumped in the water, we looked at each other and said, all right, I'm comfortable with going into the water and going into the shore break and the washing machine effect is what we call it. And he's like, yeah, I'm good for it too. So we both smiled at each other and we jumped in and did what we had to do. Uh, they were able to get several people to shore. The Border Patrol says the vessel carrying those folks, part of a smuggling ring used to bring migrants to the U.S. illegally. This is not good either. This is an SUV hanging over the railing of a bridge. There was a baby on board that vehicle, but the child was ejected during that crash and ended up in the water. A good Samaritan jumped in, saved the infant. This is happening on a bridge going over the bay in Ocean City, Maryland. The baby was saved. So were seven other people. All of them had to be cut out of those two vehicles. They were all taken to the hospital. So was the baby. No word on any of the conditions of any of those folks. And finally this morning, this is a Brentwood animal control officer under a car taking off the engine splash and lo and behold, Look what he found. Oh, five little kittens, just days old. So here's the story. The owner of the car thought she had a cat living under the hood. She drove to the fire station. Firefighters checked it out, couldn't find anything. So they called animal services to help out. They used a tool to get down around the engine. When the guy did that, he heard some hissing. And this is what ended up finding two black, three male tabbies. They were all taken to the shelter to be checked out and they were all Put up for adoption after they get uh, get healthy and get well. They well, look pretty good though. Her hunch was right. Yeah. <laughs> that there was at least one cat under there, but, <laughs> but five. But five. Wow. Well, at least they're okay. Yeah. Yeah, good. Pretty good shape apparently. Yeah. So Aww. there you go. Thank you, David. Uh -huh. Right now, 10 after about 74 degrees, still ahead on GMSA and 9. A soon-to-be college graduate in North Carolina won't need to go back to school anytime soon. That's because he earned an adult education before he even became a teenager. We're going to hear about him and his accomplishments in his future. Back-to-back -back losses for the Spurs against the Celtics and the 76ers. David and RJ here to give us their thoughts and preview tonight's game against the Jazz later in the newscast. And good morning, I'm Max Massey. May is Small Business Month around the country. We are here at Carolinas. We're gonna explain some tips on how they've been able to thrive over the last year and what new resources are available for small businesses around the country. We'll see you after the break. And a quick look at stocks. The Dow is up about 262 points. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It's about 914. The last year has been hard for businesses across the country, especially small businesses. There have been resources like loans and grants available. And today there are new programs available. In honor of Small Business Month, Max Massey joins us live at Catalina's in the 1700 block of Blanco Road. Max, how's the business over there? Guys, business has been good, honestly. But take a look at all this stuff. How could it not? This stuff is amazing. It is unique. It is customized. It has so much culture, so much color. It is amazing. And I mean, the man behind most of this magic, we have Uriel right here. So for people who don't know what Carolina's is, how would you explain it? Uh, Carolina's uh, started out as an antique store and it's just become so much more. We do a lot of local artists, a lot of uh, our cultura, um, a lot of just funky, cool stuff that brings a lot of San Antonio spirit to the city. Okay, so from your perspective, how has the last year been? Uh, it's been an up and down battle, definitely. At the beginning of the pandemic, we were really scared, not knowing what was gonna happen but we figured out what to do to thrive and survive in it. And we're still here. All right, well, good, I'm glad you're still here. The doors are open. 
And have you guys been able to take advantage of any of these federal resources? Yes, we were lucky enough to actually, at the beginning of the pandemic, uh, have one of the grants given to us. And so we were able to use some of the, the resources for sure. Gary, right, thank you so much. And speaking of these grants, guys, like we were saying, this month is Small Business Month. There are new grants available today, so you should see a graphic on your screen. We know Carolina's is not a restaurant, but one of the new grants available today is the Restaurant Revitalization Fund, the Small Business Association, awarding funding through the restaurant revitalization program to restaurants, bars, anywhere that serves food or drinks. Now the purpose is to provide support to eligible places that actually suffered revenue because of COVID. Registration officially opens today and it is all part of the American Rescue Plan Act that became law and they are giving out $28.6 billion. So you should see it on your screen, but just in case you don't, I'm gonna read it to you. You can apply today, restaurants.sba.gov or call the number 844-279-8898. If you have any questions, we're gonna have that information on ksat.com. And guys, we are far from over. We're gonna check back in at 9.30. Uriel is gonna join us again. We're gonna have some tips for some other local businesses, how to stay afloat, how to thrive, and we're gonna show off some of the cool stuff we see here. Guys, back to you. Thanks, Max, we're looking forward to it. Hey, viewer, just a real quick message just says that baby that was born on yes. the flight from Salt Lake to Hawaii, what about their birth certificate? Yeah. And a lot of people apparently were commenting about that. And it remains to be seen, but it's most likely the destination where the plane landed. landed. Uh -huh. It would be that county, that state, but uh, it remains to be seen. So if we find out more, we'll let you know. Oh, yeah. Well, for now, let's go ahead and check in with Justin. The wild weather here over the weekend, yep. and that trend continues for folks off to our east and northeast. That same storm system, guys, moved east and produced quite a few tornadoes overnight. There was quite a bit of damage in places like Louisiana and Mississippi. Take a look at this video. There you got a funnel cloud potential tornado there in uh, parts of Louisiana, and this, uh, I believe, did do some damage. Uh, it was... A, a sort of a long track, not that it was one tornado all the way through, but one storm system that just brought sort of a line of tornadoes. And uh, it's it's been pretty wild last uh, last week or so with these storm systems. But there you see the situation in Louisiana. Well, let's look at the storm reports and I'll show you that uh, right there. That's where that first tornado was. And then it was just sort of a line all the way through Mississippi. 23 tornadoes in all, at least there was probably a little bit more, but that damage, that line of damage stretching from Louisiana all the way through the state of Mississippi. And now there will be more severe weather today. I think across parts of Arkansas, back into Oklahoma, even West Texas could get in on a little bit of severe weather. Slight risk there as a frontal boundary shifts south. And that frontal boundary will move through our neck of the woods as we get into tomorrow. I want to show you the dew points to start off. And this sort of tells the story that uh, we've got a ton of moisture here across East Texas. Dry line will set up today. So we're sort of looking forward to midday today. And the dry line will be setting up just to our west. There's the frontal boundary. And it's along this dry line this afternoon where we could see one or two storms. Usually these aren't great at producing storms, but if we can't get one to develop, it could be strong. I think most of us are going to stay dry. It's not going to be a big deal. We'll keep a close eye on the radar. Then as the front comes through, uh, we'll see some chances of rain too. In the meantime, with this humidity in place, we're going to be dealing with a little bit of a heat index today. So here are the weather headlines. Hot, humid heat index this afternoon, and these clouds will clear out some. This evening, can't rule out that stray strong storm along the dry line. And then tomorrow morning, isolated storms with the front, then turning breezy. The good news is that it cools us down. Uh, today's going to be sort of our one hot day, and then we'll get into some pretty nice weather uh, by midweek. Uh, some cloud cover is still there. We had some fog earlier. Temperatures right now 74 at the airport, 73 Randolph, 75 New Braunfels, 74 in Seguin, 72 Bernie Stage, 73 Uvalde, and 74 out in Del Rio. You've got clear skies out west. Clouds generally right there along Highway 90 in the San Antonio and then points off to the east. High temperatures today, 94 here in town. It'll feel more like 95, 96, so when you factor in the humidity, and we will get some temperatures closing in on 100 down to the south and west. So it'll be a toasty day. Here's a look at the forecast. I mentioned that dry line, so we're going to go to about 8 o'clock here. This model, along with one of my other models, does show one or two isolated storms popping up right along the dry line. We'll see if that happens. If it does, again, it could be strong. And then we get our front coming through. I think that'll be pre-dawn tomorrow. A couple showers, maybe a thunderstorm with this. Best chance is going to be off to our north and east. Once this front comes through, we get gusty northerly winds, and it does cool down some. And really, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 
looking really nice. Forecast for today we will call for 94. It'll be mostly sunny, I think, but there's that 10% chance of a storm in the extended forecast. We'll go 82 tomorrow, 83 Wednesday. Notice the morning lows are in the 50s, 86 Thursday, and then it does get humid again and warm as we get into the weekend and for Mother's Day, guys. By the way, coming up, we're going to look at the aquifer and some of those rainfall totals. Really good numbers this weekend. I bet we had a lot of rain. We did. <laughs> Thank you, Justin. Yep. 921 and still ahead on GMSA at nine. He may be only 12 years old, but a North Carolina boy is about to be a high school and college graduate. We're going to hear from him and his family after the break. Last week on GMSA at nine, we told you about a 12 year old boy from North Carolina graduating from high school and college at the same time. ABC's Will Gann spoke to Mike Wimmer to find out where his passion for learning comes from and what he plans to do next. It's impressive that Mike Wimmer will graduate valedictorian of Concord Academy High School this month and he'll get his associate's degree in the same week. I finished all my high school graduation requirements in December. So then I said, OK, wait a minute. If I take a few more classes, I can get an associate's degree. It's even more impressive that he's 12 years old. Mike says his love of learning began at 18 months old when he got his first iPad. I've always been drawn to technology, of course, and that's gotten me to how I am today with uh, all this stuff. Now I know over a dozen programming languages. Mike's dad is a custom home builder. And my mom will tell you her full time job was me, getting me, busting me around everywhere, right? Both mom and dad saying they follow Mike's lead when it comes to his education. I'm having the time of my life doing what I'm doing. You know, I haven't lost my childhood and all that stuff. But when it comes to helping your genius kid with his homework. Have there ever been the moments where you're like, OK, this was a little bit more than I thought I was going to have to be. <laughs> mom and dad instituting a heads up texting system. Mike asks his mom a question on the way home from school. I'm texting at a stoplight. I'm texting. He's going to ask. You should probably Google this. So, so <laughs> but he's having fun along the way. Mike nominated to homecoming court by his peers. I did go and I did win, actually. So uh, Congratulations. that was- Congratulations. Oh, thank you, thank you. What are you the most proud of at this point in your life? Ah, <sighs> most proud of. Now that's a difficult one there, helping people in general. But that's something that I want to do. That's my entrepreneurial goal, is to build technology that enables people to live better lives. That was ABC's Will Gans reporting. Now in his free time, Mike launched two small businesses and works with, are you ready? The United States Special Operations Command. So what's next? Mike says he isn't sure he's got a job offer in and out of the United States. He could continue to grow his own companies or he continue his education. You wanna know where this kid's going? So these days, and I'm not joking, uh, the NSA and the CIA, they come looking for you in wow. many uh, occasions, you know, recruiting. Yes. And obviously we wanna keep this kid as an American asset, I right? I think. Yeah, so I wouldn't <laughs> yeah. be surprised if he gets some sort of uh, awesome shadowy job yeah. working in the government. A very bright future though. <laughs> no doubt about that. Good luck to him, whatever he does. At the How old? 12? 12. <laughs> Well, it's like a 32 year old. Trying to process it. <laughs> I know. 927 on your Monday morning. And still ahead on GMSA at 9, a cat was reunited with her San Antonio family three years after disappearing. How Animal Care Services was able to find her family. Spurs back on the road tonight after two terrible, heartbreaking losses over the weekend. David and RJ are back to talk all about that next. Welcome back. It's 930. It was a very rough weekend, to say the least, for us, all the she, Spurs fans. She, she tries so hard to smile through that. Spurs <laughs> lose at the buzzer last night after blowing a 32-point lead on Friday against Boston. David and RJ here to break down mm -hmm. what happened last night mm -hmm. against Philly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is this this is gonna be like a therapy session? <laughs> <laughs> this has been group therapy. Right here. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I got a feeling that you got some stuff to say, David. <laughs> Where do we quick. start here? Friday night was just pathetic. That All right. Oh, that, David. Was just, that was just flat out pathetic. You're up 32. Mm -hmm. I kept thinking they're not going to blow this. They're not going to blow this. They're, no, they're, there's no yeah. way they're going to blow this. Yeah. And they blew it. Yeah. They just flat out blew I like that's that's. You forgot what team you were rooting for. That's yeah. embarrassing. It was, it was pathetic. Here we go. <laughs> yes. It was really sad. It's been sad. a while. It, it, was, it was really, really sad to watch. And then um, last night they didn't. I mean, last night they sat half the starters. Yeah. Well, yeah. I guess how, you can't really divide that in half because there's five starters. So yeah. Well, here. Okay. So, 
So, okay, Friday's oh, is, game. We're going back I mean, to this. this? Is a, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Friday's <laughs> game. They're up by 32 points 32. at one point. Um, Did he say 32? 32. 32. At one point, their win probability was like 99.6% <laughs> yeah. to win this game. Uh, and in the past, like, 25 years, only three NBA teams with a 30-point lead have ever lost a game, and that is exactly what happened <laughs> to mm. the Spurs on mm. Friday night. Yeah. Just a complete meltdown in the second half. And Can there's a guy on the, on the Boston team, his name is Jason. Tatum. Apparently, Spurs never heard of him. He scored 60. <laughs> 60 yeah. points yeah. against the Spurs. He didn't even have that many threes. 60. It's like, ah, uh, you want to guard him? Yeah. Him twice? <laughs> Just, I mean, the, this yeah. is not Jason an all-star Tatum. game. He, he tied Larry Bird's record for the most points scored ever by oh Boston Celtic. Unbelievable. God. That you might want to guard him. That's all I'm saying is that, look, I just make someone else beat you in that moment. But yeah. uh, Double team him, maybe? Put two guys on him? Double, just, triple, quadruple team? I, I just do something <laughs> to stop You know what's what, funny? He's, no, it, what, it was last night. I'm getting my, I'm getting my bad losses confused. <laughs> it was last night that Embiid <laughs> missed a shot mm-hmm. that would have that would have won it for him, but let's they go ahead and show that game. The Sixers so, yeah, game. Yeah, let's just, yeah, <laughs> let's might just as well. Go there. Misery loves company. Let's so stay in the nightmare, guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. Look at this. Um, Joel Embiid. Yeah. yeah but but and, once again, the Spurs didn't even start three of their starters. Yeah, so no Jakob, no DeMar, uh, no DeJounte in this yeah, one. Okay. Uh, they, of course, they are hitting the road tonight. So, but played, you know what? I, I got to give them credit at least for showing up here in the second half and at least making this a game because they took Philadelphia into overtime. Look at that. Our old good friend there, Danny Green, hit yeah. some jump mm-hmm. shots. <laughs> but uh, they end up losing this one at the buzzer as well. So just a couple of brutal losses for the Spurs over oh, the past Did you see days. how they lost this one, Mark? Oh, we're going to yep. show them Plus, here in a bit. We're going we're gonna to show you. We're going to show you. And this was, like, really sad, too. Okay. Yeah. Ahead, so just, just the way they lost. Here the Band-Aid game off. Went Go into ahead. Overtime. Patty okay, Mills. Yeah. Yeah, we're in a lock over. there. And here is the uh, – no, this was the, this uh, was the, the This was the one he missed. Mm-hmm. That sent mm-hmm. it to overtime. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so then we're, we go to overtime, and the Spurs yeah, – right, Showing over. some signs of life here, Kelvin Johnson. Johnson. got some move. <laughs> yeah. But the problem was at the other end of the floor for Kelvin Johnson. We'll show you that <laughs> yeah. in a second. <laughs> Look at, look uh, we just, we're just delaying the inevitable here. Yeah, we're just, this is a horrible okay. ending. Here we go. Here we go. Watch this. Oh, I got that. That was, that was a tip in. Yeah. Who's, who's, who's supposed to block that guy out? Mm. Yeah. Nobody blocked out Mr. Simmons, and he went in for a tip-in at the buzzer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Coach Pop, <sighs> after the game, asked, uh, what happened there? And then Coach Pop basically say, like, well, stuff happens. That was his answer. Yeah. Uh, uh, it that. was, uh, yeah, it's, it's been a rough uh, couple of days for the Spurs and, of course, Spurs Nation. Worse. And now we're playing in Utah tonight, yeah. David. Well, the good couple, news is two straight road. games. <laughs> Bad news yes. is they're playing Utah and they're playing them tonight, and then they get Tuesday off, and then they play Utah. Is it Wednesday. Utah top team in the West right now? Mm, yeah, we are. Say, don't, okay. that, don't go there. <laughs> Never mind. Hey, you know what? Here, here's the amazing thing: the Lakers are actually dropping down the standings because remember they they've been without LeBron for a while, and he Ryan comes Davis, back, and they yeah. still can't. So look at them; they're down to number seven, and LeBron's whining about that play-in game, dude. That may be how That's you true. get in the playoffs. They, they may actually game. play the Spurs. You want to quit whining yeah. about that thing? He did it again this weekend. Yeah. Talking about how he hates the play-in game. Yeah. Well, right, that may so. be what saves your bacon. Yeah, Spurs uh, hanging in there in the tenth spot. All right, uh, NFL draft this Bro, weekend, David. Cowboys. Because the Cowboys had 11 picks. Remember they made that trade on Friday? Mm-hmm. Or Thursday night they made their trade. We were talking about it Friday morning. Right. And they ended up with another pick. So they had 11 picks. Eight of those picks were on the defensive side of the ball. You think they're yeah. trying to fill a few holes? There's, uh, a, there's a strategy there. Yeah, yeah. I think so, yeah. The first yeah. six picks, in fact, uh, all defense. So definitely they know that they got some serious issues there as we head into the uh, upcoming season. So. We'll see. New defensive coordinator, got some athletic guys yep. there, made some, uh, you know, late picks here with a couple of offensive linemen, a couple of interesting guys here. But uh, overall, uh, not, a, not a terrible and draft they, for the Cowboys. And they spread it out over all the positions. They've got some linebackers, they've got some defensive backs, some cornerbacks, some defensive tackles, some defensive ends. So, so they spread it out. Mm-hmm. And real quick, the Texans. Mm-hmm. We don't oh, yeah, about what about them. those guys? Yeah, they drafted a quarterback. <laughs> mm-hmm. That was interesting. Yeah. Their Not first pick. Who that's knows what's going to happen with Deshaun Watson? Right, that's kind of an well, insurance policy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there were some yeah. local players pick. Congratulations, Kellen Mond especially. Yeah, yeah Kellen Mond, a, uh, Texas Minnesota. A&M alum. Yeah, going yeah. to the Vikings, Skull Vikings. Uh, Trayvon Merrick, Smithson Valley alum, going to the Raiders. Nice. And Caden Stearns, still high school alum, getting picked by the Denver Broncos. Good luck to all. Well done. Three more studs going to the NFL. That's right. Okay.
Kirk exactly. Cousins can be looking over his shoulder up at the, yes. in Minnesota yes. now, right? Yeah, it's right. exactly. <laughs> David and RJ, thank guys. you guys, as right. always. Thanks, you guys. Bet. Let's look outside with live cam. A nice 76 degrees for now. It's going to warm up, though. Oh, yeah. We're going to be in the 90s this afternoon. Things are really going to start heating up. It's a little hazy out there. we got a lot of humidity. Have you seen the blooms on the cactus this year? I, I don't know if, I mean, I know they happen every spring, but I feel like they're more beautiful this year, more vibrant. I think uh, maybe the freeze and the rain had something to do with all that, but uh, there you go. There's a prickly pear blossom right there. The colors are pretty incredible this year. Sylvia sent this in from Seguin. Sylvia, we do appreciate that. Uh, here is the forecast for today. And what you'll notice is here's a big spread in temperatures today across the state. So we've got triple digits down around Laredo. Uh, 93 here in San Antonio, 93, 94 for a high. You go up into the Texas Panhandle, it's going to be in the 50s and 60s. So this frontal boundary does make a difference, and it will be here by tomorrow morning. In the meantime, 74 right now in San Antonio, 75 low to 72 in Rio Medina. Any of that fog we had earlier has lifted. We're starting to see the morning clouds sort of dissipate, and we'll see quite a bit of sun today. Now, one caveat, we could see a stray storm as we get into the afternoon and evening hours. Most of us won't see anything, but there is an outside chance of that. We got to mention it and then maybe a slight chance for shower too with the front tomorrow. We're going to have more on that forecast and again, a look at some of the uh, aquifer numbers because they're improving rapidly coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. All right, Justin, thank you. Taking a look out at TransGuy, there's Lou 410 at Calabria. Traffic building a little bit. And earlier we showed you uh, an accident at Jones Maltzberger, the access road right there at 281 Jones Maltzberger. That accident has cleared up. Good news. Well, May is Small Business Month across the country, and today, thanks to the American Rescue Plan Act, there are new opportunities and programs for local businesses. Speaking of local businesses, Max Massey has been at Carolina's Antiques through the morning, and Max, you say they have been able to pivot and do well through the pandemic. That's right. Take a look, though. They have some awesome stuff here. They have amazing designs, customizations, fantastic merchandise, but it's not because of the merchandise that they've been doing so well. Joined here with Uriel once again. So you tell us the secret with social media. Social media is so important. Um, having to figure out a new way to bring customers in without being open, uh, social media saved it for us. We go live every Tuesday and Wednesday on Facebook and Instagram doing live sales. Um, and besides that in the website, it is what's kept us afloat. And you tell us uh, your advice to other small business owners around the country is? Definitely, if you do not have Facebook and Instagram, use those free resources. If the customer falls in love with you, they'll fall in love with your business. You guys are open 11 a.m. today? 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. I'll be here. So what's next for you guys? Next, um, hopefully now that the doors are open, we will be able to start doing the open air markets that everybody's starting to do again. We miss those. We love doing those. And then just continue growing our social media and our website as well. All right, Uriel, well, thank you so much. And guys, as you've been hearing, they have been doing well through the pandemic, but a lot of uh, businesses, a lot of small businesses around the country and a lot of around San Antonio have not. We have the latest data from the government. This is from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. Unemployment rate in San Antonio area is 6.8%, and pre-pandemic, it was 3.1% in Bear County. Uh, unemployment rate, 7%. Pre-pandemic, 3.1%. And one of the biggest numbers that jump out, the leisure and hospitality employment, it is down 13.8% since the pandemic has hit. So if you can, go out there, support small businesses. It is Small Business Month. And I have to say, before we got here, our Stephanie Serna, she was raving about these earrings. Well, Baby Yoda earrings. The yes. cutest. They are the cutest. There you go. You heard it first. Appropriate for They're tomorrow. The There's tomorrow. only one pair left, Stephanie. Yep. I, ah, May there's the only one? You guys. No, no, no pressure there. <laughs> FOMO, FOMO. Uh, yeah, tomorrow's May the 4th, Fourth, uh -huh. so Star Wars yes. Day. I've been looking at them. Oh, my gosh. They would, they would be perfect. Max, <laughs> work it out. I know. 940, about 76 degrees. You're watching TMSA at 9. One of spring's most breathtaking meteor showers happening this week. RJ Marcus will be back with details on when you can catch the Ada Aquarid meteor shower, plus more trending stories on KSAT.com. Welcome back to 944. Meteor shower expected to light up part of the sky this week. Tubing season is underway and a long lost cat is now home. RJ is back with those stories and more of what's trending on KSET.com. Good morning, RJ. Bye. Yeah, good morning, guys. Got an interesting story there with that meteor shower and a cat named Cookie is back home. That's good stuff. <laughs>
<laughs> we'll find out more about Cookie here in a bit, but let's go ahead and start with that meteor shower that we might get a glimpse of this week. So grab a blanket and maybe a lawn chair and get ready to check out one of the most breathtaking sky events of the spring season. The Ada Aqua Rid Meteor Shower is set to take place before dawn this Wednesday. Now this shower comes from the debris trail of Halley's Comet. NASA says each time Halley's Comet returns to the inner solar system, it sheds a layer of ice and rock into space. So you might actually get to see what they're calling glowing trains from these meteors. So these meteors hit a speed of around 148,000 miles per hour when they hit Earth's atmosphere. Halley's Comet itself takes about 76 years to orbit the sun and will not enter the inner solar system again until 2061. So again, this is just debris. You can learn more about the uh, how to watch the meteor shower and more tips on ksat.com. So uh, some pretty cool stuff there, guys. Uh, Big uh, space watchers, uh, sky watchers. I love that kind of stuff. Do you? <laughs> I, I always forget <laughs> when it's time until it happens. Yeah, yeah. and then like, oh, did you see it last? I was like, right. oh, you're, like, oh. you're going to be at work for part of this. Okay, that's well, this true. one, so that, yeah, that's well, true. Yeah, yeah it is going to be a pre-dawn thing. So <laughs> yeah, yeah okay. interesting yeah. to check that out. All right, guys, it is tubing season, and the Kamal River in New Braunfels is open for business. The river closed on Saturday, of course, due to all the rain we had seen in the area, but it reopened yesterday. So Sunday's river flow was about 325 cubic feet per second. Compare that with Saturdays, which was about 990 Yikes. cubic feet per second. Yes, that's, that's a lot uh, of flow. That's a lot. Uh, experts there, there say conditions between 100 and 500 CFS are generally considered safe for tubing. So make sure you just kind of know that ahead of time. There is ways to check that out. The uh, Guadalupe River is also open for recreation and was not affected by this weekend's storms, uh, New Braunfels police said. So as a Texas State alum, I'm disappointed because I never knew that the cubic feet per second second rule. It's a big deal. It's yeah. It's a big deal for for kayaking and fishing and tubing. Yeah. The only catch is we're used to clear water around here and when you've had that kind of runoff, it a turns lot. to kind of like a chocolate milk. Yeah. Terrible. The debris too. Yeah. yeah. They want yeah. you to also check our check that out before you head out there. So yep. yeah, definitely some stuff to uh, think about. Okay, guys, now to a story that we are calling this morning the perfect Family reunion. Yes, perfect. <laughs> okay, yes. So check this out. A cat named Cookie has been reunited with its owner after it disappeared three years ago. Animal Care Services in San Antonio posted a message on Facebook last week asking about an injured cat that was found on a back patio. Cookie was microchipped and Animal Care officials got in contact with Cookie's original family. Turns out that Cookie's owner made arrangements three years ago with a pet sitter to watch Cookie and another cat, but the two ran away. Cookie's owner told animal care officials that she thought she'd, she would think about these lost cats every day. Eventually, Cookie's sister was found, but Cookie was still out there somewhere traveling the world, doing something. Uh, <laughs> last week, the family was finally reunited. A that's lot of awesome. kisses and uh, yeah, hugs there Aww. for Cookie. That's good. And you know, they always talk about how wise it is to go ahead and have your, your dog or cat chipped. Yes. But the follow-up there is if you move, you got to update the information in the database, too. That's interesting. That is yes. true. If you yeah. switch, they're going to go your old yeah. old residents and then and that may yeah, be a lost connection right out. there yeah, yeah yeah i wonder what stories cookie has <laughs> over <her> three years <laughs> of travel okay um all right guys now to the days of the week we have an interesting batch today is lumpy rug day what, I that. So what is it again what? lumpy rug day Thank so you. i figured you guys huh. would ask okay. it's a day to appreciate a good clean rug uh, for spring cleaning <laughs> and enjoy the old lumpy rugs and the comfort that they bring you do they bring us comfort no i was about to ask i don't know I don't getting a lot so. of comfort from mm. lumpy rugs no. Yeah. Well, tomorrow will. Okay. Tomorrow will bring us <laughs> Yes, definitely. Uh, yeah, and you guys just <laughs> talked about this Tuesday, uh, yep. May the 4th, National Star Wars Day. I know uh, Stephanie was checking out those uh, Baby Yoda, the Grogu earrings, yes, right? Yes, yeah. that's the correct term. Yeah, yeah. Grogu <laughs> is his name now. I yes. still call Spoiler him Baby Yoda. Alert. May Spoiler the 4th yeah. be with you, RJ. <laughs> <laughs> Same to you guys. Uh, Wednesday is Cinco de Mayo, which is actually not Mexico's Independence Day. It is a day that commemorates a key Mexican army victory over the French in 1862. Thursday is National Nurses Day after the year we've had definitely show some love yeah. to them. Amen. Friday, National Space Day, which honors space exploration and accomplishments. Saturday is National Coconut Cream Pie Day. Sunday, of course, Mother's Day, and it's also National Moscato Day. So maybe kill two birds with oh, one stone. Yeah. <laughs> Honor moms, get her a uh, bottle of Moscato. Mother, that's like perfect timing. It's like the yeah. perfect combination, right? I think a lot of people would like that as a gift as do you, well. Do you like Moscato? Yeah, yeah, yeah actually, hey, it's pretty good. Go. Yeah. RJ, thank you. Yeah, thank thanks, you. guys. All right, back to weather, local weather. And uh, you were talking about rainfall totals that mm -hmm. were off the charts. We knew we were going to have a, a big rain output from this system, but yep. I mean, 
it is surprising in some spots. It's always feast or famine around here. I tell you, we went drought, 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 and then we picked up seven to 10 inches of rain uh, from, uh, from about the end of last week through the weekend. And look at where we are now. 10.99 for the year. We're 2.7 above the average. So it just took one big rain event or a couple of rain events close together uh, to give us what we needed. Now that does not mean we're out of the woods yet, but uh, this helps a whole lot. Let's look at the aquifer. And remember we were going down here. We went into stage two and look how much we've jumped up now. 663.8 as of today, still rising. Does that mean we're out of stage two? No. 10 day average is important here. It's a 654.4, but it's going to be up to the city and saws to decide if we come out of stage two. And because we may hit another dry streak here, they may just leave it in place. We'll see what happens. Uh, but this uh, rain was certainly helpful to our cause in our drought situation that we were in. Outside right now, we have some hazy conditions, lots of humidity, 76 degrees at the airport, 75 Stinson, 75 Kelly, 75 Randolph, and South Southeast Julie winds across the board. Temperatures in the 70s in most spots, 72 Bernie State, 70 in Comfort, 73 Canyon Lake, 75 right now in New Braunfels, and closing in on 80 in a few spots down towards Carrizo Springs and Catula. Dew points, 60s and 70s. That's extremely sticky air. And one thing that I should point out is with dew points this high, there will be likely a heat index this afternoon. So we're forecasting highs in the mid 90s. It's going to feel warmer than that. And uh, it'll feel a lot like summer today. High temperatures, 94 here in town, 97 in Pleasanton. Some triple digits possible down to the south and west. Here's the good news. It's just a one day thing. We got a frontal boundary tomorrow morning that cools us down and dries us out some. So here is the setup. There is the frontal boundary behind us some low clouds. It's really cool across the panhandle and there is a dry line too. Now dry lines typically don't do a whole lot for us, but there may be just enough push there today to get one or two storms going along the dry line. I'll show you that in just a second. Temperatures we're in the six to seventies and even eighties down here in South Texas. They're in the fifties and sixties in the panhandle. So that front does make a difference. And as we look at the forecast here, that dry line gets close enough to where it tries to touch off a few storms. If we can get storms going, and that's always a big if with dry lines, they could be strong to severe. So that's something we'll watch this afternoon. Then our front comes through pre dawn tomorrow. That may kick off a few showers in a storm or two, generally off to our north and east, but can't rule it out here across San Antonio. And then behind it again, cooler breezy conditions. Forecast for today, we will call for a 10% chance for storm 5 p.m. through 8 p.m. Temperatures up around 94 and the extended forecast 82 tomorrow. So cooler, breezy 50s for lows Wednesday and Thursday morning. Highs in the 80s and as it stands right now, Mother's Day weekend looking pretty nice, just a little warm. We'll be right back. Tomorrow on GMSA at 9, we're spotlighting an educator in Divine who's using critters, yes, critters, to keep her students excited about reading. Well, this morning's show flew by. Yes, it did. Yeah, it yep. did. All right. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for joining us, and we'll have a great day and a great week.